Welcome to part 9 of the live steam Charles Loco build, and welcome to my workshop and garden railway. Please like and subscribe. As I'm waiting on fasteners for the cylinders, I decided to push on with the port plates and slide valves. Here's a port plate with exhaust port and one steam port milled. I decided to go with the rectangular ports centrally positioned, rather than the circular ports set over to the side. The larger rectangular ports enabled me to pull them over to the middle. There's been no changes to the ports in the cylinder. This is the setup using the plunger clock to help with the coordinates. The dial on the vertical slide cannot be zeroed and the clock helps with keeping an eye on backlash from the feed screw when I change directions. I produce the ports by first drilling through slightly undersized in the center, then with slot drills plunge straight through, taking half mil cuts, again plunging straight through, to full width, then finally traversing straight across to get the smooth face. Here's the port plate in position. You can see the cylinder ports underneath. I want the loco to run slowly, so I'm keeping those ports small. The ports in the plate are 3 16ths for the exhaust, and 3 30 seconds for the steam, and 3 eighths wide. The port plates are finished. Now it's time for the slide valves. I'm a big fan of reusing, so I reuse the pieces cut out from the steam chests. They were just the right size. The two blanks milled on all sides. They are 0.7 inch long, 0.6 inch wide, and half an inch high. The height could come down a bit. The cavities have been milled 0.41 inch long by 3 eighths wide, and 60 thou deep. The central slot is for the driving and adjustment nut. It's an eighth of an inch. I'm copying the design that I used on the steam diesel. That's a 1 eighth hole for the valve spindle. Slot milled to the hole to allow the valve to be able to move vertically on and off the port plate when needed. There's a one quarter inch counterbore by 70 thou deep each end to allow some clearance for spindle supports so I can get enough valve travel. I blacked a valve cavity to show you how it connects a steam port to the exhaust port when on the exhaust cycle. When one port is connected to the exhaust, the other is exposed to the incoming steam, which is filling the steam chest. It's a lovely process, and the higher steam pressure in the chest keeps the valve nicely seated against the port face. It's the reverse situation with an oscillating cylinder. Thanks for watching.